Hi everybody, I'm the founder of uh, Pine Tree Macro. Pine Tree Macro is a global asset allocation uh, product for high net worth individuals. Uh, so here today I'm going to talk about the macro global macro uh, dashboard. Uh, this is the one dashboard which we maintain where we maintain uh, most of the economic indicators, global indicators, which we take it or take into account uh, whenever we are making investment decisions. Uh, you would be interested in knowing some of these things because these indicators help you taking short and long term investment decision across different asset classes, whether it is in India or whether it is US. And it is across asset classes, not only the equities, but equities, debt, uh, real estate, gold, etc. As Alan as, as Alan Greenspan once stated, macroeconomic indicators tell us where we have been, where we are, and can even guide us to where we are going. So these are the economic indicators. So just some color coding, you would see some striking color over here. More red means it is risk off kind of thing where we are concerned. Uh, more green means where it's kind of risk on where, you know, it is supportive of asset classes. So let's start with the first indicator. The first indicator is uh, GOFA, uh, BOFA move index. What is a move index? I'm pretty sure most of you would not have heard about a uh, mobile index. Uh, but if you know about the volatility, equity volatility, you know VIX index. Uh, same way, move index is the volatility index for bonds. When we're bank, bonds become very volatile, they affect other asset classes. Uh, I'm sure all of you would remember uh, two years back when Liz Truss was uh, uh, the Prime Minister of United Kingdom, and they made some uh, you know statements about uh, increasing the deficits. Uh, UK bond market actually went uh, bidless. There was no bid in the market and it was very illiquid. It, said it affected all asset classes. At that point of time, uh, the BUFA move index touched 150. Uh, it's a separate thing that, uh, you know, after that incident was resolved, uh, Liz Truss resigned as the prime minister of UK. So you could see actually the kind of impact which a bond market move, a massive bond market move would affect, even affect the presidency, uh, prime ministership of uh, UK. So in December 2023, this index was 114 and steadily actually it is coming to a very benign zone where uh, less volatility in bonds is good for most asset classes. The, the second one is US dollar index. This everybody would know the dollar index. Uh, higher the dollar, bad it is for asset classes. Lower the dollar, good it is for asset classes. So it's a very simple way of looking things. If you tell me that you know dollar index will go to 110 or 115 or 120, then I would say the asset prices will be lower as dollar index moves up. When dollar index moves down, it increases liquidity in the system and that liquidity goes to the asset classes. I'm, I'm quite comfortable having a uh, dollar index of 104 to 105, but anything above 108, 110 will be quite bad for asset class, for the assets. And any breakdown of dollar index below 100 will be quite good for uh, most assets, including emerging market assets. The third is uh, the 10 year government, uh, Japanese government bond. I have not put over here US government bond. For the simple reason that uh, the Japanese own huge amount of global bonds. So when their, bond, their own bond deals goes up, they have to sell global assets to buy their own bonds. As, as Japanese bond deals goes up, they have to sell US bonds to buy their own government bonds. So rising Jap Japanese bond deals is actually bad for uh, most risk assets. Fourth one is the Chicago Fed National Financial Conditions Index. Uh, you will see that it is negative. Uh, this index is always between one and minus one. Uh, anything in positive territory between zero and one means the financial conditions are tight. Anything in negative territory between zero and minus one, that means financial conditions are quite loose. So you will see that irrespective of Fed having very high interest rates, uh, the financial conditions continue to be loose. Uh, why I'm showing it over here is I normally never take into account the Fed rate, Federal Reserve Bank rate. But what I, what I take into account is liquidity. If the financial conditions are loose, 
then interest rates don't matter that much. Uh, the fifth one is SPDR gold trust divided by the US bonds. Uh, since 2022, when Ukraine Russia war happened, I've started seeing that more and more money is leaving US bonds and going into gold. Rising this the rising ratio actually tells us that distrust of US assets, US bonds is actually rising and more and more central bankers are preferring uh, having gold in their asset allocation rather than US government bonds. Uh, sixth is uh, 10 year minus two year treasury yield spread. Anytime this spread is negative, it tells you that there is a reasonable chance that you are going to get into recession. Now it is, it generally doesn't mean the recession happens every month. Uh, generally doesn't mean that recession will happen next month, but it certainly means that the chances of recession has actually gone up. So till the time, uh, it, uh, and this also tells us that uh, Fed is behind the curve and they should be raising the, uh, they should be cutting the interest rates. So I think uh, this should actually turn into positive after the first Fed rate cut in September. If it still continues to be negative at that point of time, that means uh, you know the chances of significant uh, of recession risk has, has gone up significantly. Uh, CBOE VIX. This is this is a uh, uh, equity VIX, equity volatility. Uh, you will see that it is around it's 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 green. So till the time it is between uh, 10 and 15, it is very very good for risk assets. Uh, and it starts moving up above 15 and you know goes towards 20. It tells you that uh, market is becoming nervous, illiquidity is going up in the market, the cost of hedging is rising, and above 20 is when you start seeing massive drawdowns in the market. Over the last couple of years, we have not seen equity volatility uh, uh, high. Actually, it has been contained. It has been very benign for the last couple of years. The next one is economic policy uh, uncertainty. Uh, this number rising economic policy uncertainty, which you would also expect because we are on the verge of possibly on the verge of change in uh, uh, president in United States. That means we will have completely different policy than the one which we are currently having. And hence rising economic uncertainty is never good for assets. So it is possible that if this number continue, this continues to rise, it will start showing up in assets at some point of time. Oil. Uh, oil is a, a very big uh, delta for a lot of uh, countries. For India, 86% of all the oil which uh, India uses is imported. Rising oil prices have actually led to uh, Reserve Bank of India raising the rates. So anything between 70 and 90 is a sweet spot for both producers as well as consumers. Below 70, uh, the production starts going down. Uh, because shale production is no more, uh, you know, uh, beneficial, uh, profitable below 70. Above 90 is when consumption starts coming down simply because of the rising oil prices starts hurting the consumer, plus starts leading to higher uh, inflation. So at this point of time between 70 and 90, which I still expect to be there till uh, US president election uh, result, I think uh, this can be, uh, we can keep this aside and say, okay, till the time it is in this range, we are not worried at all. The next one is uh, uh, market cap to GDP. This is also known as Warren Buffett uh, ratio. Uh, according to Warren Buffett ratio, till the time this ratio is around uh, 100%, 80 to 100%, that means the markets are reasonably priced. But as you can see, we are at uh, 192%. I think it's an all time, uh, it's a second time we've seen this kind of ratio. And that roughly tells us that according to that ratio, US markets are significantly, significantly overvalued at this point of time. The next one is CNN greed and fear index. Green means that market is fearful. Fearful market uh, normally actually means it's a good time to buy the market. So I'm just giving you a contradiction over here where Although the US markets continue to be, uh, you know, market cap to GDP is uh, very, very high. It's in very concerning, uh, cat uh, it's in uh, overvalued uh, category, but still uh, according to some short term data, which is calculated by CNN, greed and fear index continues to be fear, fearful. That means more and more investors are actually fearful of the market rather than being greedy. 
when this ratio goes towards 70 and 80 at that point of time it is good time to take uh, you know uh, increase the cash levels in the portfolio uh, 12th is the last one is the i share uh, high yield bond uh, index this is actually uh, made up of uh, uh, b category of uh, bonds not the highest category bonds so whenever there is a, a concern risk then these spreads widen where the spread for people who have double b or lower credit there uh, they have to pay more interest rates to uh, you know uh, get money so this is actually the etf which tells you that if the price of the etf is going up that means there is no concern in the market and, and the companies which are double b and below continues to pay very low spread over treasury to access the liquidity in the market so what i've shared in front of you is the uh, is our uh, global macro indicators dashboard uh, we make this thing uh, internally for our processes every week this is the first time we are putting it in a public domain but on a monthly basis from the next month onwards uh, we aim to put this thing in public domain in the first week of the next month itself uh, just some disclaimers and if you want to get in touch with us do write to us and plus you can access we are there on social media also